Hello and welcome once again to Akuse's blog. If you are new here, kindly subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell when you're done. You know you've been cooking bangkung the wrong way since time immemorial, and today I'm going to show you the authentic way to prepare this special delicacy eaten by the people of Ghana, Ever and Fanti tribe in Ghana. The main swallow banku is made from fermented cassava and kondo. And then I'm going to show you a new way of frying your fish too to get the best out of it. First of all, I have my assorted fresh fish for this recipe. I'm using panla and cassava fish. I also have my minced vegetables. I have some ginger, my garlic, mixed onions, I have habanero pepper, some bell pepper, and tomatoes. I also have some dry spices. I have cloves, black pepper, alligator pepper, some star spices, rosemary, bay leaf, and my stock cube. I also have fresh green pepper for this recipe too. Now I have my flour and then I have my corn dough and cassava dough. This has been fermented already. And lastly, we have salt to taste. Now let's begin. In a saucepan, I'm going to put about a kg of corn dough into it and then add about half kg which is 500 grams of cassava dough for this recipe so make sure it's always two is to one if you want the best or the perfect banku now i'm adding plenty water to this i'm making sure that it's at the brim of my saucepan after i'm going to mash everything together Make sure you mash it so that it doesn't contain any lamb in it. After I'm going to rinse my hands with a little bit of water and then allow it to settle. I don't know how to explain that in English, but that is how we say it in Chi. So I will cover it when I'm done. I'll then move on to prepare my fish for this recipe too. So I'm cleaning it with a lot of water and then after I'm going to take the fins out of it. Now it's always good to know how to use minimal tools in the kitchen too. We have special knives for fish but then always know how to use others method too. Now I'm cleaning it with a lot of lime juice because I don't want that fishy smell. So I'll set it aside and move on to my other fish. This one has a lot of skills so I'm taking the skills out of it and then I would also use my lamb to scrape it when I'm done. Remember that this type of fish when you allow it to cool completely before taking the scales out of it it will be messy because it tends to be very soft or has a lot of liquid when it's melted when the ice melts let me put it that way now i'm going to use my scissors to take out all the unwanted parts you can leave yours it's optional but then i prefer to do my this way you can take out the skill from this particular fish but then I prefer to leave mine because it gives me that crunchiness when I chew it. After I'm cutting it into the desired shape that I want and then I'll set it aside. You can season this with only salt but today I'm going to show you a different way of seasoning your fish too. So in a blender, I'm blending my garlic, pepper, and then onion with ginger. And then I'll add it directly to my fish. After I'm going to mix it with my all-purpose seasoning powder. This is homemade with a lot of spices. 
natural spices. I prefer to use natural spices to artificial ones because to me it's the best to avoid any blood pressure in future. Now I'm adding a little bit of salt to taste so you can taste yours when you are done. Now I'm going to mix everything and then set it aside for four good hours. If you're not going to use it immediately after the four hours, kindly refrigerate this and it can be in the fridge for as long as you want, particularly in the freezer section. You can keep it for as long as a year without having any problem. The longer it stays, the better the flavor. So I'm covering it with my cling film. And then voila, I set it aside. Now, after about four hours, look at how my condo mixture has turned out to be. So I'm going to scrape the water on top of it in another bowl and then I will put it away. We are not going to need it. This is the trick a lot of people do not know. They just mix it and then cook their banku right away. But when you do it this way, trust me, it's the best. Let me explain this in my local dialect. So wo kabanku na se wo so ne so ansa na wa kabanku na de bia o more no ana banch more no enkeka udia de 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 after you put it on fire and then you add your salt to taste. Remember the African way we don't measure we only use our eyeballs or we gauge with our eyes. So to be on the safer side, always do a little at a time. You taste if it's not to your preference, you add or you leave it like that. Always make sure to have clean water by you when you are turning your banku. So I'm going to stir this till it starts forming lamps. Please don't leave it at this stage. We are going to turn it all as lumpy. Let me remind you of that. If you don't do it that way, your bankung will be lumpy when it's done. And we don't want that. Nobody would want to eat any lumpy bankung after it's prepared. No a see no, yes I beshe. To be no musa kopim se a best at se e to to a ba. E to to a ba in jai koswa ni nuban kunimu. U ya a baby amba. Basa u jai naso kase to a ba in timi jai munua a na se wa se ya ube ye na ban kunu a to a ba. U ye ni se if we say Hit na e no adriane no. Uko swa unumunu na o maintain hit level no. So you continue to turn it or you continue to wish it till it turns lumpy like you all see here. And then you exert a little bit of pressure to turn it again. I don't know the English word for turning banku so if you know it kindly help me out i'm really finding it difficult to express myself in the english language with this banku recipe so traditionally we have a uh, bowls or a saucepan called that the same for this recipe and it makes it so simple but then if you don't have that the same or if you don't have a local um coal pot what do you do now i'm outside of my locality so i have to improvise and i always turn my banku on my gas stove and trust me it always turns out to be very good if you do not have your banku tattoo, you can use any of these wooden ladles that are very strong and you are good to go. Now, make sure that you don't have any of the leftovers on the 
outer parts of your saucepan it makes it not nice at all so please do well to be taking it out with your fingers make sure it's clean you dip it in your cold water and then you scrape the outer part of if you don't have that one or if you don't feel comfortable with it you always have to get your spatula or anything that has a very smooth um, tip and then you can use it to scrape the brims out now look at how it turned out to be I never stopped when it turned lumpy I continue doing it and this is the result when it starts being lumpy and you leave it trust me you won't like the outcome I bet the man casa and with your banco when it becomes lumpy it's very difficult so i find it so difficult to eat it so trust me do it this way with my method and you always get it right now that i'm done i'm going to pour a little bit of water to allow it to cook if you mix it watery first believe me it will be so soft that you won't have to add any water and it's not good so always make sure that your mixture is a little bit heavy and then after it's turned very solid you add a little bit of water like i'm doing here and then you scrape the outer part off so you can use your knife to scrape it out or you can use spatula like i'm doing here and then i'll cover it to allow it to cook for about 10 to 15 minutes and this is how it looks like after i'm going to turn it over to allow the outer part to cook too and then i'll cover it again for at least an additional five to ten minutes make sure that your fire at this stage is on the medium heat so that it doesn't burn After the additional 10 minutes this is how it looks like now it's boiling beautifully and the water is so clear cream for that matter so if your fire is too high it will turn brown or black and we don't want that for our banku if you are not using yellow corn for your recipe so I'll then continue turning my banku little at a time so I mix everything to be very smooth now this food is very nice it has a lot of carbohydrates and believe me carbohydrate gives us energy after eating this and because the corn and cassava dough is fermented too you always sleep after eating this delicious delicacy it is so good so I'll scrape the outer parts into the food and then continue turning my food. I don't want my banku um, to have a lot of um, condo at the edges when I'm turning it. It makes it not nice and appeasing to my eyes. So I always take the outer parts and then I continue scraping it. Now look at how smooth everything turn out to be at this stage it's still not cooked though the color has been turning from clearer cream creamish white to cream color but it's still not cooked so i'm doing this on a medium heat and then now continue turning till I'm satisfied with my banku. Also, in order to know whether your banku is cooked, you take some out. If it sticks on your fingers, it means it's not cooked. 
if it doesn't stick it means it's cooked so that is how traditionally we test for how prepared or how cooked our banku is you can also beat it with your hands and when you see that there's um, some leftover banku on your palms it means it's not done so you cover it and allow it to simmer for an additional 10 to 15 minutes and then you come back to it cover it to retain the heat to cook it so after the 10 minutes this is how it looks like it's now very soft so i will continue turning it to make it smooth before serving it we all can see that the color has changed drastically here it means it's really cooked it's now very soft so it's good to be eaten Now we are going to test it one more time to see how well it's cooked. So I'm going to beat it and this time round there isn't any on my finger. I'm going to take some out too and believe me there is no pain on my hands as well. So I will start serving it. Now you can use your calabash or your gourd to uh, make it into a circular form. That is how we do it traditionally. But now we put it in uh, plastics and then we set. You can tie a knot or you can just turn it like this for easy opening when you want to eat it. You use your scissors to cut the excess but then I don't so I keep it or you can just scrape um, some of the banku in your plastic and then you tie a knot after it's all good so do whatever you think is right remember that some of the plastics are very toxic so always use heat resistant plastics or bpa free rubbers for your food and then you continue to scoop everything into them till it's done and then you set it aside now in another bowl i've poured my flour into it and then i'll add black pepper and then some turmeric powder for color this is optional but i prefer to use only natural spices in my food and then i'll add just a little salt to taste after I'm going to mix everything together and then I'll start by coating my already seasoned fish in it. So I cope to make sure all the sides have some of the flour. Now I do this to get some crunchiness after I'm done frying and also it doesn't splatter when it's put in the oil so it's not messy. Yeah. You have the option to not coat them in flour too and it's really good like that as well. So you can try it both ways or you can decide not to season it with peppers and onions and just add only your salt to season and it's also good. Now in order not to waste energy I'm using my deep fryer for this and then I will take it out when it's golden brown. Or when it's thoroughly cooked you can fry yours in your frying pans or into in any saucepan that you want and it's good now that I'm done I will set this one to aside and then start with a hot pepper so in a bowl I'm grinding my pepper ginger and then lots of onions because onions to me serve as my artificial spice let me put it that way eat lots of onions and trust me you wouldn't have the need to be using all these artificial spices that in the long run give you hypertension or high blood pressure after i'm going to cut my tomatoes and then grind it as well and then add salt to taste use your blender without water and you are good to go don't always try using your energy 
unnecessarily too so this is how it looks like look at how gorgeous and simple it turned out to be you guys cannot imagine the compliment i got from my investors today with this simple recipe thank you lovely people for subscribing to my channel don't forget to like share leave comment for more recipes bye bye